It begins, of course, with the Internet, which is why it's really nice to be here talking to the Internet Society, a society dedicated to the health expansion and theoretical uh, elaboration of a peer-to-peer -peer network called the Internet. The software that came to occupy the network was built around a very clear idea that had nothing to do with peers. It was called uh, server-client architecture. And the idea that the network was a network of peers was hard to perceive after a while. But if you have a system which centralizes servers, and the servers centralize their logs, then you are creating vast repositories of hierarchically organized data about people at the edges of the network that they do not control and unless they are experienced in the operation of servers will not understand the comprehensiveness of, will not understand the meaningfulness of, will not understand the aggregatability of. It is here, of course, that Mr. Zuckerberg enters. <laughs> the human race has, uh, you know, a uh, susceptibility to harm. But Mr. Zuckerberg has attained an unenviable record. <laughs> he has done more harm to the human race than anybody else his age. <laughs> So what do we need? We need a really good web server you can put in your pocket and plug in any place. In other words, it shouldn't be any larger than the charger for your cell phone. And you should be able to plug it into any power jack in the world and any wire near it or sync it up to any Wi-Fi router that happens to be in this neighborhood. Do we have the server you can put in your pocket? Indeed we do off-the-shelf hardware now, right? Because you know, of course, we really ought to put a VPN in that wall warrant. And probably we ought to put a Tor router in there. And of course we got BitTorrent. And by the time you get done with all of that, we have a freedom box. How would this be used, let's say, in a country like Libya? They have no internet because the government has cut their ability to communicate, and cell phone systems are either shut down or jammed. Boxes like these in people's houses could make a mesh that is just the boxes communicating by wireless between themselves. Moglen's project is still in the very early stages. Still, he sees a day when millions of freedom boxes will be used around the world. A modern day equivalent of two tin cans and some string. We want to put it in all the places where people might need it in order to stay free in the net. If that's revolution, then we're doing it. So first, I connect an uh, internet cable from an ISP, and then I connect the power. And that is how we turn on freedom one home at a time. <laughs> so I see a freedom box network. Using the password that is already provided with the device, I connect to this wireless network. And then I open up my browser. And then I visit a pre-designated URL. And then I see the setup.
I mean, the other benefits of uh, using Freedom Box is that we uh, we keep our uh, data local, so we have data ownership and uh, and and privacy, better privacy because the data never left our village. And uh, so we gave the infrastructure to the people. Said you have an internet in your village, and now you use some digital services inside. And we did not expect several things to happen, but this was one of the best use case. And if you go to the next, uh, people were using it for different purposes. Uh, like, uh, whenever there is a market in the village, people are calling using VoIP calls, telling people that there is a market in the village, come up. It's a brilliant use case. The federation of all services is not an inconceivable idea. Most of the services we have were meant to be federated. The net was designed for it. We are undoing problems rather than making terribly complicated inventions. This is the intended goal of the little gesture I call Freedom Box, the manufacture of simple, inexpensive, self-administrating servers that we can hold in the palm of our hand and distribute throughout the world like apple seeds. A great intercontinental activity the software for Freedom Box is made everywhere from Hyderabad to Seattle, and the current versions of the boxes are manufactured in Bulgaria. Because, of course, we do have the value of the net to make our free software in, to spread our inexpensive hardware over the world, to do all the things we need in order to make this neuroanatomy pay off, not by centralization, but by diffusion which brings with it naturally the goal of intellectual self-development at those human endpoints that we were seeking in the first place. For those who are hungry, who yearn for knowledge, who yearn for the ability of self-expression, who yearn to reach out and connect to other human beings and teach and learn from them, which is the human way, for those people who are deprived, free cheese is a good thing. And it's not their fault that we built the mousetrap and we didn't tell them. So we have an ethical obligation, a moral requirement. We have to deal with this. We can. We should. Human nature depends upon us to get it right. Time is running out.